Welcome back to another episode of The Unveiled, and welcome back to the world of super crooks. Last time we introduced our protagonist, the infamous Johnny Bolt, and after a tragic accident, when he first discovered his superpowers, Johnny seems to have gone down a much darker path, the path of the supervillain. Johnny now uses his powers for honestly no real good. He first started ripping the cash out of ATMs, though I will say that money is insured, so who, who cares to be honest, fuck the banks. <laughs> Johnny has since moved on to mid to high level robberies. With his abilities, Johnny is honestly invaluable on any type of heist. Johnny is gifted with electrokinesis, the ability to manipulate electricity. And even though Johnny short sells his abilities, he's actually pretty broken. Johnny can hack and manipulate technology, erasing camera footage, disabling communications, or even exploding the vehicles themselves around him. Johnny can even fire bolts of electricity that can incapacitate other superpowered beings. Though we never get to see Johnny fly again, and I have a theory that he's too traumatized to do so, and you know, apparently flying is prohibited if not illegal in this world, but that's another video I'll get to. Following Johnny's release from the 8th month sentence at Supermax, the world's leading superpower detention facility, we see he has no care for the consequence of prison and goes right back to his old antics, this time being surprised and persuaded by a group of his old supervillain buddies. Frostbite, who has the power of cryokinesis or manipulation of ice, is able to employ in various, various ways, from an icy mist-like breath to creating massive ice structures and bridges. Transmit, who for some reason only says the word yell yeah when he talks and has the power of teleportation, though it seems restricted to certain distances. And Kismet, whose power is actually rather fascinating in my opinion. Kismet has the ability to conjure bad luck. When activated, it's clear he can cause some of the most possible scenarios to occur. And by possible, I mean worst possible. People falling over, structures failing or collapsing, you know, planes crashing. Johnny's crew has quote unquote devised a plan that consists of hitting an entire chain of jewelry stores all within 10 minutes. Only stopping and looting at each store for one minute, with Johnny disabling the cameras and dealing with the tech side of the job, each member has a specific role. This all actually seems as if it goes well until, while finishing the final store, they encounter some non-superpowered crooks and everything literally collapses. From here, we get introduced to quite a nice suite of superheroes and a lot of various uses of Johnny and the crew's abilities. The first superhero to appear was Man Mountain, who as far as I'm gonna call it, had the power of gigantism or gigantification and, you know, he got hit with a plane. The Rubber Ball, a hero whose power was a rubber body, I guess, you know, maybe sim something similar to Monkey D. Luffy, but this guy only used it to play pinball. But after narrowly defeating these two heroes, Johnny and his crew rejoice at a job well done until what appears to be Transmit's power goes off and they come face to face with one of the most powerful superheroes in the show, the Praetorian. A member of the esteemed Union of Justice, the Praetorian is an ancient Roman warrior brought back somehow to the present and is especially known for his harsh if not brutal treatment of supervillains. What makes the Praetorian so deadly is not just his power, but the fact that he has 200 of them. That's right, the Praetorian is literally the lottery of superpowers and that lottery sometimes seems kinda rigged in my opinion. Every time the Praetorian uses his powers, apparently, even he has no idea what they will be. He can duplicate clones of himself that can also use his abilities, meaning the 200 powers get multiplied to the fourth power, and to sum it up, this man is literal hacks. After hunting down Johnny and the gang, he proceeds to one by one take each of the supervillains down, first countering Frostbite's massive ice blast with an even more massive torrent of fire that honestly gave me very strong Naruto vibes and then brutally beating him. The next clone faces off with Kizmi, who activates his bad luck, wanting to give his immense misfortune to all of the Praetorians, which is immediately countered by like a wavelength manipulation-like ability, reversing Kismet's bad luck, and causing fish and a literal shark to drop from the sky. Lastly, Praetorian displays the power of teleportation against Johnny and Transmit, separating and then brutally beating Transmit. Johnny, after attempting a daring escape, when honestly he should have just nuked the parking lot by detonating all the cars or something, proceeds to, well, get his ass kicked. Until suddenly, as if right out of an 80s cartoon, the Praetorian has a change of heart and decides to let Johnny and his crew go on the promise that they won't do it again. Next, the reason that Johnny and his crew aren't dead, and one of the most dangerous super beings in the show, and Johnny's right hand woman, aka Honey Bear, Casey Ant. Now aside from the power to deal with the immense amount of bullshit Johnny puts her through, Casey's powers are kinda like Omega Mutant level. 
It's never clearly stated, but Casey is by all means a telepath, able to force people to have hallucinations as real as reality. She can make you feel drunk, change your emotions, or go as far as to break one's mind, leaving them in an incapacitated vegetative state. This is how Johnny and his crew escape. Casey brainwashed the Praetorian, a literal A-lister of the superhero world. We never see her moving objects, but she can comb through people's minds by touch alone, or even scan them from within a large area. And throughout the series, she's shown being a major linchpin in most of the success for their operations. The Diesel Brothers. Say hello to Sammy and Roddy Diesel, the indestructible duo. I call them indestructible because of their unbelievably powerful healing factors, similar to that of Deadpool or Wolverines. The brothers' bodies can regenerate within seconds to minutes after they take damage. Whether that's bullets, fire, lasers, blunt, or piercing damage, the brothers are also incredibly capable fighters, seeing themselves as professional wrestlers, Sam is a fraud. Operating as a tag team duo, the brothers have a slight advantage, at the least to say, going so far as to use their own bodies being torn apart as a way to defeat or disable their opponents. It should be noted that while Sammy is a degenerate and spends all his money on hookers and booze, Roddy actually graduated with a degree in temporal physics from Princeton University, so you know, guess you can't judge a book by its cover. The Ghost, or Josh if you know. The Ghost has the ability to phase through solid matter, be it solid ground, concrete, etc. He became renowned as the world's greatest cat burglar for this ability and led a successful criminal career until the presence of superheroes made him, you know, seek a more suitable life. Ghost found himself in prison at one point, and having tried to instigate a war between multiple racist gangs, they all actually overcame their differences to kill Ghost. Only being rescued by an old supervillain and his crew, Ghost was introduced to the criminal world through this. It should be noted that once Ghost has set his mind on a particular path, he will accomplish it unless there is no other way. TK McCabe, the telekinetic. One of the villains who quit the job once America started to gather more superheroes, TK has the ability of telekinesis, particularly the ability to move things with his mind. At first, I thought it was the control of metal, but upon a second watch of the show, it's shown TK's powers go past what you consider normal. Cars, shipping containers, and even bodies. McCabe can control and manipulate a massive amount of things at once, like you know an immense zombie horde. He made ride bicycles and storm the city of Pittsburgh. TK McCabe is however one of the only villains confirmed to have a wife and a child. Following TK McCabe, we have the man who put him in prison and the mightiest hero of the Union of Justice, the Gladiator. While the only power the Gladiator exhibited was increased strength and martial prowess, he's easily been shown dispatching a gang of supervillains and even defeated a corrupt superhero with a single punch. The Gladiator detests supervillains, stating that they use their gift of superpowers to satisfy and help only themselves. He is one of the most loved heroes being known for extinguishing the flames of villainy. Although, it should be of note that our honorable Captain Stars and Stripes is also a closet homosexual, which is precisely what allows supervillains in the future to blackmail him. And finally, the last character for today's unveiling, and a literal silver lining in the clouds, the villain, Forecast. While he doesn't look or act like one, he is indeed a villain. You see, what Forecast does is sell people umbrellas at a ridiculous upcharge when it's raining. Kinda an okay business model, but it gets better when you see Forecast can control the weather itself. He has the power over weather. Able to create storms on a clear sunny day, localized lightning without clouds, and he can even make blizzards inside of contained areas. The applications of exactly how powerful Forecast is are never disclosed, much like the status of many of these other superheroes and villains that I've stated throughout the video. But as you can see, the world of super crooks is incredibly interesting and chock full of colorful characters. But we haven't even begun to dive into the personal acclaimed masterpiece. Come back for the next episode. And hey, if you've watched this far... Hey boss, it's clear. I didn't interrupt a celebration.